got a review today of the Blu-ray of Microwave Massacre, the Arrow Blu-ray, and I uh, finished watching it with the special features, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. It's been a movie and a release that's been relatively well covered on YouTube already, but I did have a few things to add to it. Um, the movie's bad. I mean, you know, I, I think everyone would admit that. It's a horror comedy that's just not very funny. I mean, um, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I like it, but I like it. It's got a, it's, <clears throat> it's got a certain charm that just you just can't uh, ignore. And I think that's why it's got a Blu-ray release from Arrow. And Arrow did a great job on it. The film looks beautiful. Uh, I like all, I like the cover art. I like both um, both cover arts on this thing. Um, the movie, there's a backstory to the movie that's more interesting, I think, than the film. And so this is, I'm not going to talk too much about the movie other than to give you some of my tidbits that I picked up uh, that I thought were interesting. Uh, the, the whole film cost about less than a hundred thousand dollars. I think somebody mentioned seventy-five, eighty thousand, <clears throat> of which um, the, the the main actor, the comedian, uh, got ten thousand um, dollars. Originally, Jackie Vernon, who played the construction worker that goes on these killing sprees, was not the intended actor they were they were talking about getting uh, Rodney Dangerfield and I think he would have done just as good a job because the whole character of Vernon is a down and out it's kind of the comedy doormat and you know Rodney Dangerfield was probably the best at being a comedy doormat um, it was shot on 35 millimeter which is probably why it looks so good today uh, and it has the look of an expensive movie, even though they spent $100,000 on it. Um, the girl at the start, the first few minutes of the film will definitely get your attention. The girl walking down the street has an amazing rack, incredible rack. She looks like she's out of Malibu. Malibu High, I think, was one of the director's films that he had worked on earlier. Uh, and it does look like Malibu High in the context of a horror movie, but this girl with Amazing Rack just kind of disappeared after this. She only had, I think she had an assistant director credit after Microwave Massacre, and uh, nothing in the, do the documentary or the commentary with the director would indicate that they know what happened to her either, so who knows. Um, Paul, it was a, it was suggested that there's Paul Rubens is in this movie. The guy that plays Pee Wee Herman, but um, I don't think that was ever proven one way or the other. Hang, on, I got to do a cigar lighting here. Uh, how many? Cause the, the other interesting tidbit, if you notice and watch the movie as carefully as a fool like me did on a movie like this, there's a bust of Beethoven in the construction worker's house. I mean, how many, how many construction blue-collar guys are fans of Beethoven? Uh, Jackie Vernon was the, his claim to fame was he was the voice of Frosty the Snowman. He also was on The Night Stalker. I think he did an episode of The Night Stalker. The director, uh, his father was a child prodigy. Uh, played uh, concert pianist at you know, less than 10 years old. And then his father went on to direct The Monster of Pietras Blancas, which is a 50s horror movie, a low-budget film that was kind of a spinoff. It was a ripoff, if you will, of Creature from Black Lagoon. <clears throat> and it turns out, based on what Wayne said, the director, that his dad had worked on some Jack Arnold films, and they cobbled together a lot of the makeup uh, and masks and things for the cre variety of creatures in the Jack Arnold films 
predominantly creature from Black Lagoon, which I've got a t-shirt of, to make the monster of Pietras Blancas, which is a, it's a cool, cool little movie. The, it's basically a creature from Black Lagoon that rips people's heads off, walks around with their heads. Um, so, discussion about some of the killings. There's some uh, a variety of interesting killings in this movie. You got the giant salt shaker killing, and the best part, of course, is when he takes a break from pounding his wife with the salt shaker to sprinkle a little on his hand and throw it over his shoulder, which is, you know, good luck. That that was, I mean, it's not ha ha funny, but it was it was kind of entertaining. Uh, then you got the naked woman that he gets ready to kill that he butters, really butters her, like with a huge butter knife, probably a three or four foot butt butter knife, and of course he makes sure that the uh, the crotch is buttered first. He butters from the bottom up, so that's a good scene. Um, then you got the muscular construction worker who basically talks like a tranny. Um, that's that was pretty entertaining. Uh, the microwave, which people have talked about, looks like a huge. Uh, well, it looks like something out of the kitchen in the Shining movie. It's a huge industrial size type affair that uh, turns out was built out of cardboard. And uh, Vernon's wife. The lady that played the actress, the lady, the actress that played Vernon's wife, was petrified of this sticking her head in this box, even though it's made of cardboard. So, so those are just a few little glimpses into the movie that I wanted to share. I still would recommend getting the Blu-ray. It's, it's, you got to just know what you're getting into. It's, 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 uh, it, it has some entertainment value and it's it is it it tries really hard to be funny uh, so you got to get it credit for a for effort and can and consistency of trying to be funny but uh, it's not a good movie but uh, but it's a good release and a great looking film and I think the backstory to the film again is far more interesting than the film itself so I would give it a th four or five out of ten for the movie and Probably a 7 out of 10 for the uh, release. Thanks for watching.